Pintaro, your portal to Doma Vaquera. My name is Nika Hilkema, and I'll be bringing you anything and everything you want to know about Doma Vaquera and the world of Doma Vaquera. Um, if you've joined my channel so far, you've been able to see that I have quite some videos out there already on how to do the most simple things um, from um, you know, the, the basics of Doma Vaquera, doing a, a knot in your horse's tail, a cowboy knot, um, also explaining the saddles. And one of the things that um, I was requested to do is actually show how you put the saddle on and further explain some of the things, key things about um, a Doma Vaquera saddle because it's, it's quite tricky if you've been only been used to uh, English saddles or Western saddles. Um, it's a little bit different. There's some things you should pay attention to. Um, so I have my trusty steed Isolda here. You've been seeing her on videos before as well. She's my 21 year old Andalusian mare or, or pre, I should say, um, and she's quite amazing. I uh, love her to death, but she's not the easiest. So let's hope she cooperates today. We have quite some flies out, so um, I'll try to keep this short and sweet so she won't be bothered too much by the flies and the heat and you guys get everything you need um, about how to put a saddle on as well as a bridle. I'll be showing you how to put a bridle on and how to adjust the bit. I've done some pieces on the bit um, or you know how it works, some theory presentations. Um, also explained a little bit with riding, so of course I'll do that more later uh, in my series about the basics of Doma Vaquera. Um, I already did the first, um, first just the, the overall basics. Then I did the first um, of the basics, which is um, one of the five principles, which is moving forward. Next time I'll do about uh, do it about the halt and the stop which are super important as well. And there's not just, you know, one thing to it. Um, there's uh, different assets uh, or aspects of, of the halt. So I'll be doing that later, as well as posting the theory behind it. Um, so let's get started. So I brought my Doma Vaquera saddle. Um, I will show you quite heavy um, in Spain. Um, of course, the work is done, the Doma Vaquera work is basically the work in the field with the cattle, done with the, by, mostly by men, so the saddles are quite heavy. Uh, they make them out of fiberglass as well, but I like to keep things authentic, to be honest. Um, so I just have your old school saddle, which is super, super heavy. I have bruises all over my legs, because when I carry it, um, the metal uh, stirrups dangle against my legs. Um, in Spain, they would carry it differently. They would keep the the stirrups down and you would actually carry it on your on your shoulder like this and when you take it and put it on your horse he sold us already stepping away every time I put the saddle on she acts like it's the first time so I won't do it like that um, I'll take the stirrup over and then you have to make sure that when you put it on that the stirrup doesn't fall to the other side because it's it's a metal you know quite heavy stirrup so it could you know, bump into their stomach, which is not really nice, actually. So let's hope he sort of stands still. Even though we've been doing this for about 15 years. Um, so like I said, you have to watch out the stirrup stays in place. I'll walk to the other side and take the stirrup off. Also take the girth so it doesn't hit her as well because it's quite heavy and long as you can see I hope I hope I'm staying within range of the of the camera shot here so um, first thing to, to pay attention to and like I've explained in the other videos about the saddle so the the Doma Vaquera saddle seems quite long and large for you know English standards um, which is the case, but because it has a different construction, it actually has a, as a, um, the surface that actually carries the weight runs from here to here and then back again. So, you know, you don't have one specific point um, being, um, how would you say that, um, you know, the, where the weight is, is concentrated. It's really spread across the entire saddle. So when you put it on, normally with an English saddle, you would keep it, really keep that shoulder freedom. It sits a little bit on the shoulder, but again, with an English saddle, if you would put it there, there would be a lot of weight there because it's not distributed across the rest of the saddle. Um, but with a Doma Vaquera saddle, it is distributed more. So first of all, you put it 
right around there. I'm going to move these shoulder up a little bit. And I'm afraid I'll be out of the shot otherwise. So, so you put it about there. So it's just touching the shoulder here. Make sure it's, it's stable and it kind of just will fall into place. A Domo Akira saddle, if you buy it in the beginning, it's actually, um, it will fit to the horse. So um, it's filled with, with um, uh, horse hair uh, and wool, etc., or other materials if it's, you know, depending on, on who manufactured it, but if it's, if it's old school, it is. Um, and that will shape to the horse. Um, it also, you know, dries quite quickly because obviously you don't have a saddle pad. Don't make that mistake that you use a saddle pad. A lot, you see a lot of people doing that because they figure, well, it'll keep my saddle cleaner, etc. No, you want the saddle to really fit to the horse. So you want to make sure that you don't use a saddle pad so it will, it will totally, you know, conform to your horse's specific shape. So when you put it on, it'll just fall into place. You can almost not, you know, really uh, get it wrong. So another thing that I've, I've had questions about, I'm going to make you sort of go forward a little bit again, because I'm afraid you're not going to be able to see. Good girl. Another thing I get questions about, because when people, either when they buy their saddle, it's either, um, you know, all in separate pieces, especially if it's new, so you have to kind of put it together. But one of the things that people generally do wrong is they put the girth behind the stirrups. So I've mentioned that before, the stirrups are actually situated quite in front uh, of the saddle, which almost gives you, you know, that really that, that um, chair seat. Um, so you have to make sure when you're riding, put your feet back. But because of that, um, you know, it just seems a weird place, I think people feel to put the, put the girth. So you put the girth in front of the stirrups. So your stirrup strap's gonna run here, it goes under the saddle, and then you want your girth to run in front of that and it goes under the seat under this you know sheepskin um asalia we call it um so you want to make sure that goes in front now some saddles have a place where you can a buckle here in front or you can adjust the crupper i'll explain the crupper and the adjustment of that in a minute um but some saddles have like mine on the side so there'll be two straps one in, run one side and the other where you can tighten and adjust your crupper um, but some have it in front here, so you have to make sure that that girth is running in front there. Now, if the buckle is there, then you just place it slightly behind it, um, not necessarily on the buckle, because you're going to have to access the buckle to be able to adjust the crupper. So your, your girth, go, girth goes in front. So you take your girth, as you normally would, the, you know, it doesn't really matter whether it's a, a dressage saddle or a English saddle or Western saddle. And you adjust it, so you run it through the ring and then through the buckle that's under your sheepskin and you tighten it. And now, because of the shape of the saddle, you don't tighten it like you would an English saddle. An English saddle can easily turn, but because the Domo Akira saddle is pre-shaped on the front, so with that V-shape on the front and the rounding on the back, it's quite stable. So you don't need to do it, you know, super, super tight like you would um, on an English saddle, which I generally don't do either. I mean, if you sit in the middle of your horse, you don't have to, you know, do your girth that extremely tight is my opinion. But anyway, I don't want to say that. And, you know, people do that and then fall off their horse or something. So, um, but that's just how I do it. But in Domo Aikido, you really don't have to do it super tight. So you do it so it's nice and snug, but not extremely tight. So you have your, your leather left over and you just stick that back under under your sheepskin cover. Now also, if you've adjusted your stirrups, you'll also have a, le a leather left over and you just put that back as well. You just run that back under your sheepskin cover. So as you'll notice, um, this is also, from what I understand, a little bit of a misconception uh, with people, um, is you, you have your sheepskin cover and then you have um, also like a canvas cover probably, um, Either you have to buy it separate, but most saddles, they'll give you one uh, when you buy a saddle. So for everyday use, you want to make sure you use that. You want to make sure you keep your sheepskin nice and clean and um, just, you know, tidy. Um, so you use your canvas uh, cover. That's not only for putting your saddle away, that's actually for riding. So you put it on and you, it usually has the rings here and you can tie, um, you know, uh, the little leather straps, run them through the rings and then tie it up. Um, it's to make sure it stays in place, but that's just for protection, um, you know, keeping your, your uh, sheepskin nice and tidy. 
So I'm going to move Isolde up again because I think she stepped back because I want to explain the crupper. One step, Isolde. Good girl. Good girl. So the crupper is, is kind of like any other one. I mean, we used to have... Um, we used to have uh, trotters, so with a crupper, you want to make sure you have like a hand breadth uh, under the crupper. And I'm not sure. Um, I might have to see if she's going to go back again. I'm going to have to stop for a minute, turn the camera, and then uh, okay, we're get back. back to you. So now you see more of her hind end. So it's like any other crupper would be adjusted. Um, the reason for the crupper is, and I've explained that when I talked about the saddle in one of my first videos, uh, the reason for the crupper is that because the girth is quite far forward, you know, if you would make unexpected expected stops in the field, because when you're working with the cattle, you don't know what they're going to do. And the horse might not always listen, or he might stop because he sees danger before you do. So if you weren't sitting back in your saddle, then you might be, you know, and he stops uh, suddenly and you're not sitting, either the saddle might flip. So you have a crupper for, for stability. So when you put the crupper on, uh, make sure you take the base of the tail. A lot of people will take the end. Um, I think I have to move her up again. A lot of people take the, the end of the tail. You want to take the base of the tail. So first, initially you take, take the end, um, you pull it up, and then you make sure that the, at the base, she's actually, the tail is up. Otherwise, you're never going to get it on because you want to make sure that all the hair is out from under the tail. So see here, so we have our crupper, and like I said, like a hand breadth. Because, you know, in some cases it might seem a little loose. You think, well, that's loose. But when a horse, especially with Doma Vaquera, is, is engaged and it has to, you know, really tuck its pelvis under and, and rotate its pelvis, then it's going to do this. And then it's going to need that extra room that you gave it with the crupper. So that's super important. Um, another thing to point out um, is the stirrups. When you get up, when you get on your horse, um, you want to either, you know, step on a, a mounting block or something um, that's a little bit higher because it's better for your horse and better for your saddle. Um, but if you get on, because the the stirrups, you can't s s uh, see them as well. I have to pick them up. Um, because they're like this, um, you want to make sure that when you get up, they're they're pointing this way. So you put your foot in like this and you tip it down because it's slanted here. So that'll kind of follow the rounding of your horse. And then you put it, you put your foot in like that, and then you can turn. Um, but that, you know, really prevents you from poking your horse with the, the big metal um, stirrups. Another misconception, by the way, I get a lot of those questions from people: is um, can't you? Doesn't it hurt the horse when you, you know, when you're riding? Isn't you know, don't you poke the horse the whole time? But not really, because your foot, your entire foot is in in the stirrups. So your entire foot is in there. So actually, it it it. Your, your heel sticks out maybe a little bit. So the heel, your heel and your your leg will actually always touch your horse. Um, and, you know, potentially this corner could touch your horse. Um, but uh, believe me, I've tried it before um, because I don't generally wear spurs with Isola because she's super sensitive. But sometimes during a demo, I would need it. I would try to actually poke her a little bit to get some more out of her. And um, it's quite difficult. So don't worry that when you ride with these stirrups, that you actually poke them. I did explain, and I will explain in another video as well, um, I did explain how to sit, right? And I explained that, you know, when you sit in an in a, uh, English saddle, you have your legs straight, um, which is kind of hard to see now on the video, um, but you have your legs straight forward. Um, I'll move Isolde over so I can explain and show you what I mean. Because this is another mistake that's done quite often. Um, so let me see if you can see. So when you're when you're riding English, you have your knees straight and your 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 legs straight. Basically, you're sitting on your saddle like this. Um, your toes are facing forward. You don't want your toes faced out. You know, I'm sure you've heard your instructor say, "Toes in, toes in." So you have your toes in, straight forward. On a bacchetta saddle, you have to do everything that your English teacher said not to do. First of all, you open your legs. You kind of open your pelvis and you point your toes out. And not that that's the rule to point your toes out, but it actually enables you to sit correctly on the saddle because the saddle is quite thick. So you can't, if you try to sit like this, 
and then actually touch your horse with your legs, it's really difficult. So you have to kind of open your legs, point your knees out, your toes out, and what you do is you embrace your horse. So you want to make sure that your, your entire leg down to your heel is actually embracing your horse and touching your horse. And to do that, you know, you kind of have to do this with your legs and sometimes it's not the rule, but that's what happens naturally is that your toe kind of goes down. So, you know, your heel goes up. So what's the most important thing in English riding? Heels down. I mean, how many times have we all heard that, right? But in this case, if you want to sit correctly, be able to embrace your horse, you know, and actually touch your horse with your legs on a saddle like this, you have to sit like this, which sometimes results in your heel going up, your toe down, but it's okay because you're maintaining contact and your foot does not push in your in your stirrup, right? So where you normally, like I said, you would, you would keep your heels down um, and you'd really push, you know, let your weight go through your leg, through your ankle. You don't do that. You rest your entire foot. So your whole leg, when you put your foot in, in the stirrup, your whole foot is in there and your leg is actually touching the front here. So don't put it back and try to put your heels down. That's not gonna work. And especially if you sit like I just I just explained. So you wanna put your whole foot in there, your leg against it, um, and don't put your heels down because your feet are just resting. You know, it's not really, like I said, pushing that weight down. You can sit a little bit heavier, but that's not the intention. The intention is just to sit and you sit three point, you know, your seat bones and your pelvic bone and your, your super stable like that and your legs are just you know embracing your horse but not pushing down pushing up because because your foot is totally you know the whole base of your foot is in the stirrup um if you would try to push you know uh, your heels down because it's like that and you're not resting your foot on the ball of your foot and being able to you know really bounce through your ankle what happens is if you push on it then you're going to push yourself out of the saddle you don't want to do that which brings me to another point. Um, with the Domo Vaquero saddle, and I explained that in the, in the theory, but I'll explain it now again. Um, how long should the stirrups be? Well, they should be, technically, I guess, you know, if you say uh, like five fingers from your groin to the saddle, so if you put your, you know, your hand um, under your groin, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that now because it's kind of awkward, um, but I, I, I encourage you to do it at home. Um, if you would do that, I guess it's about the same as what you would say with, with um, English saddles, your, your stirrup has to be, you know, when you're resting or hanging, letting your legs hang, the stirrup kind of touches your ankle bone, um, that, you know, that bone that sticks out on the inside of your foot. Um, so if you go, you know, take that length from your ankle bone to the bottom of your foot, that's about five fingers as well. So um, it might feel quite short though in this saddle, um, but definitely, you know, better shorter than longer because otherwise it's harder to do, to, you know, to make that that you know embracing of your horse because if your legs are really long and you do that they're going to slip out of your stirrups so make sure your stirrups are short enough um, so that's again you know kind of the basics like i said make sure your 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 girth is in front of your stirrups make sure your crupper is the right length not too not too loose um, but also definitely not too tight i'd rather see a loose one than a t too tight one because otherwise your, your horse can't do this um, uh, and again, make sure you sit in the middle of your saddle um, like you would in, in any, um, in any uh, type of riding discipline. So now I'll, um, I'll, I'll tell you about the bridle, how to put the bridle on and how to adjust the curb. And we've talked about that in theory. I've talked to, you know, I explained the bridle, how it, you know, what it looks like and how the curb works. But now I can actually, I'll show it to you on Isola as well. And I'll show you how you should hold the reins. Um, so um, that's a really important piece when you're you know using your tack probably most people might buy a bridle before they buy a saddle saddles are obviously quite expensive and actually I would say that that's the most important piece um, although I have to mention I was talking with somebody yesterday and they had bought a Spanish horse who had been ridden in Spain um, and what they notice is that and I've, I've had that with Isolde but the other way around is because they've been ridden Baquera the, the saddle is quite high on the horse, so your feet, your legs generally are higher on your horse. If I was sitting on a, a dressage saddle, my stirrups would be longer um, and my, my leg would be in a different position on my horse, much lower. And with the baquera, you're, you're kind of, like I said, you're, you're embracing them, so you're touching them with your heel, um, pressing with your heel. That's different with an English saddle. So what you'll notice is horses that have been ridden in Spain and have been ridden uh, baquera, 
they they might not react to your leg initially when you're riding with an English saddle because your leg placement is, is totally different. It's a different way, you know, it's a pressing like this instead of, you know, like this. Um, so you might get that. And I had that with Isolde as well. I taught her Baquera first. And then at a certain point she had some injuries and I had to just ride low and long and you can't really do that with Baquera. Baquera, so um, there's flies everywhere today. Um, so what I did was I, I, I wrote her English, you know, to ride her low. Um, but then what I noticed is that she didn't understand my leg. I mean, she's super sensitive, but she found that a little bit tricky. So um, that's something to consider if your horse has been ridden in Spain before. So um, now I'm gonna explain about the bridle and so, the bits. Like I said, I'm gonna explain about the bridle. We got a little bit more up close and personal now, um, so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, one thing to point out, um, the Spanish will probably get mad at me because I'm showing, I'm giving the wrong example, and I totally agree, is you shouldn't ride with your mosquito, the ones that are made out of horsehair. These are really meant for, you know, competition, for feria, for rocio. Um, you should always ride the ones with just the leather straps, um, but they're on my other bridle. I actually need a new bridle, um, just regular working bridle for Isolde. But for now, I have to show you with this one, because it's the only one I have at hand. Um, so when you, um, you know, first of all, you have to make sure you're ready to actually ride with a curb bit. Um, if you are, let's assume you are, um, and Isol is obviously an advanced horse, so she, you know, I ride her with one hand, two reins, and a curb bit. Um, uh, you have to make sure um, that that is the case before you just, you know, throw any curb bit in. When you first start, you start with a snaffle and a sereta, um, or you start with a curb, um, you know, a simple pelham like curb and a sereta. Or just with the curb and, and you know the other reins on the mouthpiece. I've explained that before as well. You can watch my other videos or the presentations about that to explain how that actually works. Um, now, once you've gone from the four reins and the sereta to the two reins, um, what we still do um, just to keep it authentic um, is you you still keep the musarola. So on the nose band, you still have that metal piece under there. Um, it has no real function anymore. I think it's just to remind the horses of you know, um, yep, that's where the sereta was, um, you know, just to, to kind of, I guess, warn them um, to make sure they, they pay attention um, and they're weary of that. So, um, so we have our curb. Um, obviously, like any other bridle, you just put your reins on first. So let's stay here, please. Good girl. Again, Antonio slapped me on the fingers for having a rusty bit. Um, they actually, they're iron bits and that's how they, that's how they always were. Um, but nowadays they do make the stainless steel ones that actually look older. Um, but I know that he sold us, she likes the rusty taste. It's, it's a sweeter taste when it's rust. Um, even her English, English bit is a German steel bit and it's actually, it's also it has a sweeter taste to it. Um, she hates stainless steel. Anyway, so um, so just like any bit, you want to make sure there's just you know one um, one line or now I forget the word um, when you're fitting your bit. Just one is enough. Um, with your nose band, you want to make sure it's it's uh, tight or snug, but not super tight. It's not like the English ones when, with dressage. I mean, I don't ride dressage like that either, but. A lot of people, you know, just like with the girth, they really tighten it. Um, you don't have to do that. It just has to be snug, not move around. If you actually do ride with a sereta, make sure it is tight when you ride with a sereta because it has the reins on it. Now, this is metal, so, you know, that piece of the nose band is metal. Now, if that would be um, loose and you have your reins and you go, you know, ding, 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 it's going to hit the nose of uh, the bones on her nose, so that's not going to be very nice. You want to make sure that that is tight if you're actually riding with four reins on the sereta. Otherwise, if you're advanced and you know she just has the, the regular nose band with the musarola, um, you just leave it like this. Now, here's the tricky part um, the chain. First of all, when you put the mine's super rusty, so it's hard to twist, you want to make sure your chain is flat. Now, there's different types of chain, you really. Um, heavier ones, lighter ones, ones with the leather covering. Isolde has a standard one, but what you want to make sure is that you keep twisting it until it's laying flat on the chin. It has to be totally flat. 
Now, I've also explained that in one of my presentations is, is how, how tight it has to be. This is super important because I also explained how a bit works. Um, so you wanna make sure, I'll, I'll tighten it first. You wanna make sure you can fit two fingers under there. So two fingers, actually this one's a little bit snug. Now it's hard with the rusty chain, but just fit two fingers. Um, you saw this kind of in between the second and the third ring. So some days I'll, I'll use two, sometimes I'll use third, three, sometimes a little bit more sensitive, sometimes she's a little bit more against me, against the hand. So about two fingers you want to be able to fit under there. Um, on my presentation it showed the fingers like this. Actually, it could be maybe a little bit too loose then. I would just lay them flat or like that. Make sure you can fit that in and that should be enough. Um, so. Then, I explained before, let me get you sold a little bit closer. Um, I explained before how, the, how, a, how a curb actually works, and it's in three areas. So your curb works on your key, on your um, key chain, the, the chin chain. Um, it works on the pole. So I've, I've mentioned before, and I'll, I'll now ex explain it and show it to you. You want it, the chin chain to be that length that when you tilt 45 degrees, now it's a little bit tighter, so it's not even 45 degrees, 40 to 45 degrees. Um, and then you already, so if I do this, she'll already, now she wants to back up. But what they'll normally do, what she will normally do is, is you know, drop her head. So you saw that? Yeah, good girl. See, now she's going to back up too because she's super sensitive. Um, but you want to be able to tilt it. Yeah, good. See her do this? So she basically gives to the pressure. She yields to the pressure. In front of it a bit. So what happens then, as you see, and I explained about the ratios, right? So what happens when you tilt it, you know, this tilt and this piece, is, which is connected to your, your bridle here, um, this piece, um, you that, um, pulls on the bridle and then of course puts pressure on the pole. So when you do that, it'll put pressure on the pole and will also, you know, um, create this effect where they want to yield to that pressure. Now if you had a high port, so that's the three areas, so the chin chain, the pull area, and the port. So she is a quite low port. I'll, um, I didn't show you, but it's quite low. So it gives some tongue freedom, but not so much, but some are quite higher, um, just like a, a spade bit, you know, they're never that severe or seldom that severe. I've never seen them in Spain, but they do exist. Um, but if you would tilt, so if your chain was not tight enough, you could tilt too far and then that port will actually hit the roof of their mouth. You don't want that to happen because that's not very nice. Uh, spade bits are also supposed to be, you know, ridden with um, with the weight of your rein, right? Um, in Doma Waikato, we take, you know, quite engaged reins. Um, so, you know, when you're riding with a higher port, you have to take that into consideration. Make sure your chain is adjusted to the right length. Um, you know, you should never see curb bits that are horizontal, that they have that much room that they can totally go horizontal. Um, that's not what you want. Um, and that doesn't make it any nicer, the bit either. I think a lot of people don't understand how a curb bit works. So they think, ah, oh, you know, I'll just do, I'll just do it like that. Then it's much nicer. You know, if you think your bit's not nice, um, then you're probably not ready to ride with a curb bit. And second of all, you have to understand how it works. Loosening the chain does not make it nicer. Um, you know, sometimes you see in pictures where the, the bit is quite back a lot. That doesn't always mean that the curb was too loose. That can be a moment where, you know, a split second where you had, you know, asked for something and then before she was able to give it, it, it had, you know, um, the picture was taken or whatever. Um, but in general, it shouldn't even be possible to have your, your bit horizontal. Um, it depends on how, how much the horse is, you know, uh, yielding to the pressure or giving into the pressure. So those are important things uh, to, to pay attention to. Now I also said I'd explain how you how you hold the reins. Um, so how you hold the reins is, if you have your knot here, um, you, you would always take your knot and then you just, you put your, your hands around it, just like this, let's say. Um, and then all you do is put your pinky in between. And that's basically how you hold the reins. Now if you see, so I'm holding it straight like this, now both reins are, are equal, right? So that's why you always want to grab your knot and you adjust, you know, you hold your reins and then you let your knot fall. Now you'll see this little loop here. Why is that? Because this, this inside rein is making a, um, 
a shorter you know turn this is the outside so it has a little bit of room left over so when you look down at your range you always want to see that little bit of room on that inside range so if it's not then you take your knot again and you adjust it and then you let it drop again so this doesn't mean that one rein is longer than the other this means that they're actually the perfect length they're actually uh, equal because if you see it like this they're absolutely equal and then you let it go so again so you put you just grab your rein like you would grab anything grab a stick and then you put your pinky in the middle so on my hands for example you'll see you know this um, little bump on my pinky that's because I ride because when I have to ride like that um, so that's how you hold your reins uh, you always hold them in the left hand um, never in the right it's not optional on the right you keep your garocha um, which is always the case um, and that's just basically how it is so I I hope that was beneficial um, you know every time I do these videos I get um, questions or remarks or suggestions keep those coming uh, you can put them in the comments below um, you know always welcome uh, if you're not subscribed make sure you do subscribe now because we're trying to we're trying to get the word out people we're trying to spread this outside of Spain if you haven't seen these videos in English that's because they don't exist now they do so we want to get the, the word out there because it's such a beautiful discipline riding discipline and it shouldn't be contained just within Spain or you know some of the other countries surrounding Spain like France and Italy we want to really get it out there um, you know we see a lot of people compare it to working equitation and it is comparable in the sense that is that's where it came from uh, the working equitation it really came from those working disciplines you know used with with herding the cattle in the south of, of Europe um, but we don't want to keep it there and actually what I like to say is you know if, if you can ride Doma Vaquera you can ride working equitation because that's you know that's what it's made for it's made as a functional riding discipline but in the meantime we actually have you know competitions and championships as well we want to get that out there so if you know if trail riding is not your thing and you don't want to work with cows Doma Vaquera is perfect um, you know it's just like it's just like dressage it's much more like dressage than it is western don't you know there's a big distinction there as well we don't do neck reining um a lot of the the basics are the same as well um and i think pretty much all basics of all disciplines are the same but we do you know ride with one hand like western but we ride differently we don't neck rein i'll i'll, I'll do a piece on that sometime as well but um but it's a beautiful discipline and you know I want people to experience it more and see it more it's for all kinds of horses all kinds of riders and it's just super fun I had a, um, a um, student over from Poland the other day um, uh, and you know it was the first time well first time he has a trained horse but um, that he rode with my mare in any case and really got to experience Domo Aquera in a Baquera saddle um, and he, he said how much fun it was and it really is uh, but you can also still do all those elegant exercises like you do with dressage, but it's still super fun and, and kind of cool, right? I mean, riding with one hand is, is quite cool, especially if you can do your flying changes and your, your canter pirouettes and everything with one hand. I mean, how cool is that? So, um, so I encourage you, subscribe, spread the word, um, keep sending comments. Uh, thank you, everybody, for all your support. And uh, next week I'll be in Spain, so I'll hope to follow up with some footage from there. Some training sessions and also um, filming my trainer Antonio Quinta uh, who is multiple champion um, and an amazing amazing person an amazing rider and uh, someone I really admire a lot um, so more more on that uh, next week from Spain in the meantime enjoy my videos this isn't the only one there's lots more please subscribe and hope to see you soon